Um, welcome. Uh, my name is Murray Woodman, and this evening I'd like to talk about and discuss how to train a quick chat AI powered chatbot with Drupal. Um, so this evening I'll be walking you through a number of uh, different technologies. Uh, you know, first off, there we have Drupal. So I will be showing um, a quick chat module that we've been working uh, on here uh, at Morphed. The quick chat module um, integrates in with uh, quick chat chatbot. So quick chat is a, a SaaS. Um, it's a startup um, which is uh, provides a chatbot and a trainable model that you can use um, for the chatbot. And that chatbot is in turn sitting on GPT-3, um, which is a, a very powerful uh, language model that's been developed uh, by OpenAI. So they're the three technologies we'll be talking about uh, this evening. Uh, the first sort of concept I would like to talk about, and you know, for anyone who sees my talks, I always seem to at least start off with talking about um, Drupal as a content experience platform, but it, it really is very much um, sort of one of the ways that, you know, um, I'm thinking about uh, content management systems. Uh, these days. And, you know, when we think of a, a CXP or a content management system, at least, um, you know, what are we thinking about? And you could say that um, a CXP is really a CMS that behaves in an omni-channel way. That is, it is able to store and manage and deliver content to a number of different platforms. So typically when we're thinking about these different platforms that we're developing for or producing content for, we may be thinking about websites, decoupled websites, um, third-party, um, so native applications, uh, in-store displays, and basically you know, a number of different applications that are able to consume that data. But uh, you know, another way we can think about things is um, you know, the CMS can be used to deliver uh, content to different systems, not end users necessarily, but different systems that are able to make use of that data and add value to that data to then, so that we can then serve that back to the users. So for example, we have different recommendation engines um, that we can use Drupal for, for, for storing the content and um, delivering recommendations to users. Uh, there are many different SaaS um, services out there where, you know, for search where the search index can be consumed and, and smart search results uh, delivered. And in this particular case, this evening, we're gonna be talking about chatbots. So um, why not store the content and the knowledge base for a chatbot inside Drupal and basically have that content available to editors when they are editing the content. So the aim here is to provide an awesome or great editor experience where the editors can manage the content and the knowledge base right alongside the content that they would be um, you know working on um, just for the the website or for these other services that we have on the left hand side so I, I don't want to labor the point but it's this is the you know a really sort of key insight that the the CMS can grow uh, and be have more utility when we start thinking of it in terms of serving, you know, different machines out there, you know, as well as users. How did I get here uh, this evening? So, you know, this uh, is Lita, uh, and Lita is an avatar um, that's been um, produced by a company called Synthesia. Synthesia um, provides, uh, they generate um, animated avatars that are able to, you know, speak a script. Uh, Dr. Alan, Thompson, he's an Aussie based in Perth, um, very smart and inspirational person. He's done, uh, you know, a lot of really interesting uh, YouTube videos around AI um, and embedded intelligence. And he's sort of basically got this whole series of 50 or 60 videos now where he has a conversation with Lita. And, uh, you know, he, he will um, ask a question and Lita will We'll have an answer. And basically, it's the GPT-3 um, model sitting underneath that is powering Lita. So when I first came across these videos, I really firstly was astounded at uh, you know, the breadth of knowledge uh, of, of Lita and GPT-3, but also the conversational nature um, of, of the exchanges. Um, so we're not really sort of 
talking, you know, uh, sort of canned responses here. We're talking very natural um, responses where, um, you know, ideas and thoughts are put together in, in new ways. And uh, if you watch any of those videos, you, you really uh, cannot help but be amazed at, um, you know, what is possible um, these days. So I've got a, a few links at the end there. Um, so to, you can see more about Lita and, and uh, Dr. Alan um, Thompson, but yeah, very inspirational um, work. So, you know, the, the main idea that, you know, that spawned me onto the, the next thing was, you know, basically we have these amazing conversational uh, interfaces that we can have with G powered by GPT-3. It's a very natural conclusion to, um, to uh, you know, to have a chatbot, you know, based on those. Okay, so let's have a little look at, um, you know, GPT-3. Firstly, it's a language model that's been developed um, by OpenAI. And it is uh, probably off the charts in, in terms of scale and size for, for most of us to, to uh, you know, to understand. So I, I think it's got like 175 billion, uh, you know, different um, sort of measures inside it. So as, as a model, it is incredibly uh, complex. Um, but in terms of the data it has consumed is just sort of awe-inspiring as well. I mean, we, we can see the number of tokens there on Wikipedia encompassing most of human knowledge, you could, you could argue, only 3 billion. And then we have all of this, you know, other information that it, is, it has consumed. So uh, it's consumed a lot of the web, it's consumed a lot of popular academic um, journals and newspapers and, you know, uh, and books as well. So the amount of information it's consumed is, uh, you know, truly staggering. And this gives GPT an incredible breadth, just not only in knowledge, but just, you know, awareness of, um, of different, uh, you know, different uh, sort of capabilities and, and things that are out there. So if we come across and we have a look at GPT-3, now this is um, basically you can go to OpenAI, and the, the cool thing is the GPT-3 language model is publicly available. So uh, it's been around for a couple of years now, and there's a public API that uh, you can easily sign up for and start uh, using. So um, pretty cool. If we come and have a look at some of the examples, just to give you an idea of what is possible with GPT-3, um, we have a number of different use cases here. I'll just scroll through slowly, but you can see that there's, there's a whole lot of different kinds of things you can do with GPT-3. Uh, it ranges, you know, from, you know, um, you know, creating prose to, you know, writing code to classifying content, summarizing content, and, uh, you know, working out sentiment analysis and, uh, and those kinds of things. So yes, it can even write SQL requests for you uh, if, if you want, right? So, that's right. Look out, Margie. All, all of our jobs are, are on the line. So, you know, for those of us out there who are interested in, uh, you know, the concept of, uh, you know, content, you know, you may think of classification. Uh, for instance, you're able to um, classify uh, different uh, content into discrete categories. For instance, th this is just a little example here where um, we may, you know, want to, you know, classify FedEx as a delivery company or Facebook as a social media company. The whole idea here is that you give, um, you give a, um, a prompt and that prompt is then used to, to drive um, the response. So that's classification. I mean, keywords would be um, similar, but possibly even more impressive in that you're able to give it a, uh, you know, a string, a, uh, a summary or description, if you will and uh, you know, it will produce uh, you know, a nice set of keywords. So I, I think anyone working in the content management game would probably appreciate the, uh, you know, the ability of being able to um, you know, generate uh, keywords like that. If we come down here to uh, conversation, which is a little bit more relevant to um, what we're talking about this evening, um, we've got an example here of Marv, the, the sarcastic chatbot. Um, now, the whole concept here is that you are able to seed GPT-3 with a, a prompt and that prompt sets the responses that you're going to, to get, right? So just by saying 
that Marv is sarcastic, right? And he reluctantly answers, you're going to get a whole bunch of smart aleck, uh, smart aleck comments from Marv, you know, because, the, you know, this is, this is how you've seeded Marv with this, with this prompt. And this is the incredible thing about GPT-3 is that um, it really depends on the prompt as to what response you get. And, uh, you know, many people are saying now that this is actually a new kind of job that is a job description that is evolving. You don't have necessarily uh, coders of computer code anymore. You will have coders of GPT-3, people who understand how to craft up prompts to, to get, you know, responses out of a language model. Um, the other one, last one I would like to show you just from a, a content perspective is um, the, uh, you know, transformation. So it can take text and, and transform it. I, I love this summarized for a second grader. You can take quite a concept um, uh, bit of text and you can have this as a prompt to summarize for a second grader. And then you get a beautiful, simple summary here. So you, you could see this would be a perfect, you know, uh, description uh, for SEO or, you know, maybe for a teaser or something like that. So of course there's, you know, incredible application here just for, for content management systems as a whole. Um, the other thing I would like to move on to just to talk about with GPT-3 is the fact that you can customize it. Okay. So there is an amazing model. We've consumed all those billions of, um, of tokens and we've got 175 billion um, sort of weights inside the system. But the, the very cool thing is that you can easily train this or fine tune it. So you can customize um, GPT-3 for your application. And if you want to use the open, A, open AI API, you can upload a training file. So if we just have a quick look at the training file, I think it's down here somewhere, or maybe, sorry, it's on the next, the next screen. But essentially you can upload a, a list of um, prompts and responses to train um, GPT-3. So for example, you could train a tone of voice you could train a knowledge base, you could a, a train it to be, you know, to handle a certain way of speaking. And this is basically how different companies are now building applications on top of um, GPT-3 and OpenAI. So I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but you have, you know, a whole bunch of different applications that people are building where they're building whole business models, uh, you know, based around, um, based around uh, this kind of concept. And if you come across into the fine tuning part of the documentation, um, you can see that, uh, you know, the, one of the benefits of um, fine tuning the model is that you do not have to rely just on the prompt, right? So we've seen the prompt before, which is just a few words, but now you can, you're able to train up um, with, with many more examples, uh, you know, to, to essentially train um, the model. Um, so yeah, the, so this is really, the amazing thing with GPT-3 is that you're able to fine tune it with relatively few data points. So we're only talking a hundred or so um, data points and you can basically bring your own flavor uh, sitting on top of GPT-3. So that is what is uh, underlying um, the chatbot that we'll be you know, looking at uh, this evening. So moving on to, to quick chat, uh, quick chat AI. So we've seen how you know, what the possibilities are for GPT-3, um, how it's a very broad and, and deep model, how it's very conversational. And we've also seen the API provided by OpenAI and uh, how we're able to fine tune models. What QuickChat have done is they've, they've taken that underlying um, foundation and they've just built basically a SaaS service um, sitting on top of that. And OpenAI um, uh, basically has provided a UI so that editors or um, administrators at least are able to um, manage a knowledge base that sits on top of, um, of GPT-3. So I'm going to come across and we can just have a look at the back end of um, Quick Chat. So here we are, we, we've signed up for a Quick Chat subscription and I'm actually looking at the Morphs uh, subscription here. So yep, that's right. We're looking at um, production uh, data at the moment. Please forgive me, Margie. Um, we can we can come in and have a look at the knowledge base um, here. So the, the beauty of Quick Chat is that it, it does allow you to manage a knowledge base just through a series of statements, right? So, you know, how many have we got there? I don't know, 100, 150 
different statements. These are just little snippets of, um, of text. And I think so long as they're around a thousand characters or whatever, we are able to push those over into, um, into quick chat. So if you were just coming at this direct for, as a user of quick chat, you can come in here, enter your content, um, retrain your chat bot. And so this is effectively fine tuning GPT-3 underneath. And basically you are sending, sending your content over and sort of training up, up uh, the, 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 uh, the information um, there. So this is the, the quick chat, um, this is the, the, essentially the quick chat um, model. So we, we found this, we thought it was really exciting. Um, and what I wanted to do was, you know, hook this up with Drupal. Uh, unfortunately, um, the API that Quick Chat offered at the time did not allow us to push a new model over. But, um, you know, we, we entered a, a conversation with Quick Chat and they were incredibly flexible and have basically extended the API to allow us to, um, to include the, uh, uh, to, to allow the, hey, push the yeah, to push the training set. So that's that's what we're doing. So we've built the, the quick chat module and we can push a model, the knowledge base over to quick chat via Drupal. So that is what I'm going to, to show you now. So, well, firstly, before we do that, here, here we have the quick chat module. Um, it's available now, it's all open source, it's contrib, and it's got a very uh, nice set of documentation um with you know very simple instructions so it's all ready to go i'd like to do a super big shout out to elio naveen and tanishan who've been um working on this module they're the the brains uh, behind the implementation there so let's jump across onto the morph website and this is even more production data so my apologies again margie so here here we are on the um the about page for morphed and you know i'm, I'm going to click edit um, here and like one of the the key insights, just going back to what I was talking about with the CXP before, is that we we have this concept of an editor focused uh, experience, right? So the editors are able to manage the knowledge base on exactly the same page that they manage the uh, the node, the content. So this is the about page for Morphed, and we've added a knowledge base for that. And so we're able to basically copy and paste a whole bunch of content from up here. And just put it down into the um, into the knowledge base, and uh, um, you know, do it that way. So, for instance, if we wanted to say the Sydney meetup, you know, is held in Newtown, yep, each month for Drupal enthusiasts. Enthusiasts, okay, that's it enthusiasts okay so we're held out in drupal okay so we can basically come in and save that right so this is now part of um the um the the model that we have the knowledge base that is actually sitting inside drupal and if we come into the content area of the site we now have this quick chat knowledge base section of the site and we've configured a a back end um, which is the morph production um back end here so we're now Basically, that what we're looking at here is a view of all the, the data that we have, which is essentially a knowledge base field across a number of content types. We're able to update the model, and this will push the data over into Quick Chat. Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, with the demo gods, if I just refresh, come back here, refresh this page, go to the knowledge base, and Sydney meetup, there we go. So you can see that we've pushed, <laughs> I still haven't removed the old one there that I was testing with, but you can see I've pushed this one across. So basically we're just exercising the, um, the open, uh, the quick chat uh, API at this particular point in time. And then we can you know, rebuild uh, the model. And this is once again, doing another API request and essentially retraining, or as um, you know, I discussed before, refining the model that is in GPT-3. Okay, so that, that gets pushed across. Um, we, we are also supporting a, um, a block. So the module comes with uh, a block. So yeah, nothing too, too amazing, but we've got our little um, 
GPT block here, wherever that is. There we go, the quick chat one. Configure, um, that's that's a public scenario ID, and this would just basically put a block on the um, on the page. And then when we have a look at the, the site, we now have our, um, um, you know, uh, the, the meetup, sorry, the, uh, the chat bot there. And of course, this is probably not going to work, but you know, where is the, the Sydney meetup <laughs> proof is in the pudding and all that kind of stuff. Um, will it be in Newtown? I've got no idea. I honestly haven't tested this one. Okay. All right. So doesn't know that, but we do have a drop in here in, in Newtown. Okay. But so the, anyway, so we now have this chat bot using, using um, the, the, uh, the knowledge base that we uh, you know have got inside of um, quick chat and and open AI so I'll just come back and just touch on a, a couple of um, takeaways here uh, moving right along um, so that you know we've discussed Drupal as a CXP um, and we're really taking an editor centered I'm not sure if I spelled that right an editor centered centered approach. Um, we really want the editor to be able to manage the knowledge base right next to the content. I think that's the main, um, the main uh, emphasis there. Um, we really are standing on the shoulders of giants when we use something like GPT-3 and OpenAI. Um, you know, the, the knowledge it is consumed is staggering. You know, the number of GPUs and CPUs, like in the, I can't remember, but it's like in the order of tens of thousands over many months in data centers churning away on all this knowledge to build these models. It's absolutely staggering. Um, and then, you know, being able to leverage, you know, something like quick chat, which really has provided a, a convenient way to, to host the, the actual chat button to, uh, you know, to manage the, the knowledge base. So, uh, yeah, they're all the things we're trying to do. What are the strengths? You know, I really like the, the CXP uh, approach that we've we've done. Um, in terms of how this particular chatbot works, like the its language abilities are very uh, advanced and um, uh, natural. And I think that is a really um, strong point about it. Um, you obviously have a huge breadth of uh, knowledge sitting underneath. Um, and of course, you can train different models um, sitting on top. So if you know, if your particular organization has certain set of knowledge that you wish to upload or um, a tone of voice or a certain lang you know, style of language, um, you're able to, to, uh, to train the model um, like that. But you know, I, I don't wanna say there are weaknesses, but certainly there are caveats. And I, I would say the chatbot is quite focused. So it is possible to ask GPT-3 very sort of philosophical questions and get philosophical answers. And if you look at any of the, the leader AI um, videos, which I'll link to uh, at the end, you'll be you know, amazed at sort of how fluid and um, sort of how the connections can be put together. It's astounding. But quick chat AI is really much more focused. So I, I think the prompt that they're using there really is, is driven to be focused on you know, the knowledge that you're um, updating. Um, AP, open AI in general does not want to people to use GPT-3 for life and death situations. So, uh, you know, it doesn't want people to provide um, medical or, or health uh, responses, doesn't want people to provide uh, financial advice, you know, based on GPT-3, right? So it's it's not for every everything. So there's a lot of use cases out there um, where it's not appropriate. So where is it appropriate? I think, yeah, if, if the kind of information you want to serve is informational and conversational, um, that's really good, but uh, it, you really have to, you know, consider that what you're uploading is a knowledge base, not necessarily a database. So it's going to be great at, you know, answering sort of what well, is going to be good at answering text-based sort of prosaic kinds of um, queries, but it's not really going to be good at, you know, answering, you know, what is the weather, you know, at this particular location, right? It's not actually as it's set up designed to wire into a database at the end. It's really a knowledge base of, um, of content. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it. Um, I, we've got some links for you here. Um, I really recommend Life Architect Leader down the bottom and the, uh, the YouTube channel there. That's, that's very inspirational place to, uh, to get started. And of course, we've got some uh, you know, a, API stuff and some examples there. 
Um, really huge, huge shout out to uh, Quick Chat AI um, team. They were very responsive and were able to, you know, uh, extend their API to work with us to, to bring the Drupal module uh, to fruition. And they've just released a, a blog post there as well on, on how to add that uh, to Drupal. All right, so that concludes the, uh, the session this evening. Thank you so much for everyone coming along and uh, happy to take questions. To, you know, uh, extend their API to work with us to, to bring the Drupal module uh, to fruition. And they've just released a, a blog post there as well on, on how to add that uh, to Drupal. All right, so that concludes the, uh, the session this evening. Thank you so much for everyone coming along and uh, happy to take questions. Thank you.